Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, it's it's two forty two, and I'd like to call the meeting to order. Let's see, and let's we'll begin with the uh, with the roll call of commission members. Um, after I um, uh, call your name, please reply here present and confirm that you can see and hear me. And uh, we'll begin with uh, Commissioner Fair. Present, I can see and hear you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, Commissioner Ponce. I'm present. I can see and hear you. Commissioner, uh, is Commissioner Hughes? I'm here, present. I can see and hear you. Excellent. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Rubin. We'll come back to him. Commissioner Rubin. I see he's there. We'll come back to him. Okay. Before I begin with the details regarding the virtual format of this meeting, um, just I want to share with you that starting next month, with next month's meeting um, on Thursday, June 8th, 2023, Permit Review Committee meetings will be reverting to the in person format. Meetings will be held in City Hall, 121 North LaSalle. Please check the meeting notice for additional details. The notice will be posted on the commission's website at chicago.gov slash ccl. And we look forward to seeing you there. And this is the last statement for maybe. In 2020, Governor Pritzker signed Public Act 101-0640, making certain amendments to the Open Meetings Act so that we, along with other boards and commissions, can continue to host virtual meetings during the COVID-19 public health emergency, provided that certain conditions are met. One of those commissions conditions is that Chairman Wong of the Commission on Chicago Landmarks determines that an in-person meeting of the Commission on Chicago Landmarks and its permit review committee are not practical or prudent. Commissioner Wong is determined to pursue, uh, pursuant to Section 7E2 of the Open Meetings Act that an in-person this Commission on Chicago Landmarks and its permit review committee is not practical or prudent. He is also determined pursuant to Section 7E5 that because of the disaster as declared by the governor, it is infeasible for at least one member of the Commission on Chicago Landmarks or its chief administrative officer or its chief legal officer to be physically present at the meeting place for, in, for either meeting as much as there is no physical meeting place. Pursuant to a resolution adopted by the Commission on Chicago Landmarks on, on June 4th, 2020, regarding the chairman's uh, emergency rulemaking powers, Chairman Wong issued emergency rules governing the conduct of remote public Commission meetings and provisions for remote public participation, effective February 18th, 2022. These rules are posted on the Commission's website. In line with these emergency rules, today's regular permit review committee meeting is a virtual meeting being simulcast to the general public via live streaming. Permit review uh, committee meetings have been held virtually since May of 2020. Meetings are structured to minimize um, the chances for technical difficulties. Members of the general public have been encouraged to submit written statements in advance of, of the meeting, and these have been posted on the Commission's website and are available for public view during the, the virtual meeting at www.chicago.gov slash ccl. <clears throat> per the emergency rules, verbal statements by the general public for all the agenda items will take place at the beginning of the meeting, so all those wishing to speak at today's meeting should be signed into the Zoom meeting at this time. Um, before we hear staff presentations on the agenda items and ask to hear from owners or applicants and their teams, we'll open the floor to members of the general public who wish to comment about the items to be heard on today's agenda. Members of the general public, uh, the public wishing to comment should use the raise hand function of Zoom to indicate that they wish to speak. Members of the uh, public not using a smartphone or computer and instead phoning in um, to the meeting should press star nine to activate the raise hand function and do the same to deactivate it. I or the meeting facilitator will call out the names one by one and unmute those people. Once unmuted, speakers should give their full name and organization if any they represent. Each speaker is allocated three minutes to speak. Once all members of the public wishing to make a comment have been given the opportunity to do so, we will go through the agenda. I would ask that owners and applicants and their representatives as well as aldermen wait to speak until after staff presentations have been made on their agenda item. I'd like to go through the agenda items to allow for public comment at this time. There are three agenda items. The first agenda item is for the project at 913 West Fullerton in the McCormick Row House District. Are there any members of the general public wishing to speak on this item? All right. 
seeing none. Um, the second item on the agenda is for the project at 4753 North Broadway, the former Sheridan Bank and Trust Building. Are there any members of the general public wishing to speak on this item? I see one, um, Mr. Ward Miller. Uh, can you hear me, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, we can. Yes, yeah, Ward Miller, um, Executive Director, of, uh, excuse me, the Richard, <laughs> the Richard H. Treehouse Executive Director of Preservation Chicago. Uh, I just want to mention on the former Sheridan's uh, Bank and Trust Company at 4753 North Broadway, that we've been very supportive of the landmark designation of the building, the district around it, um, over 40 buildings, I think 49 is the exact number um, of the Uptown Square District. And we're very supportive of, of all the uh, improvements to date uh, on the building, but uh, we are concerned about uh, the signage being proposed. I'm sure that Landmark staff is uh, using their standards and guidelines on this, but just wanted to uh, emphasize that we are so aware of uh, big signage on some of our buildings throughout the city um, and uh, some some signage that becomes a little overwhelming at times and wanted to uh, uh, state that we very much support the commission and the permit review committee and the city of Chicago staff in their recommendations for what's appropriate for this uh, building. Again, we realize that signage is really important uh, to all of our buildings and businesses in Chicago and especially those located in landmark buildings, uh, but wanted to again um, suggest that uh, the staff recommendation be accepted uh, for this amazing uh, cornerstone building in the heart of the Uptown Square District on Chicago's north side. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I don't see any other members of the general public uh, wishing to speak on this item. Uh, we'll move to the third item on the agenda, which is the project uh, at uh, 10324 South Longwood in the Longwood Drive District. Are there any members of the general public wishing to speak on this item? Um, seeing none, um, I believe that's all the members of the general public who have indicated that they wish to speak on agenda items. And therefore this concludes the public comment portion of the meeting. And we will now go through the agenda, which will start with the approval of the minutes from our previous meeting, the regular meeting of April 13th. Uh, 2023. Um, and I'd like to request a motion uh, to approve the minutes um, of, of the April 13th meeting. Do we have a motion? So moved, Commissioner Fair. Commissioner Fair has made a motion. Do we have a second? Second, Commissioner Hughes. Commissioner Hughes has made a second. And then we'll do the roll call. Um, Commissioner Ponce? Yes. Ponce is a yes. And uh, Commissioner Rubin? Yes. Mr. Rubin is a yes, and I'm a yes, and the motion carries unanimously, and the minutes will be posted on the commission's website. Um, thank you. And we will move to our first project, which is 913 West Fullerton, the 43rd Ward, Alderman Knudsen, McCormick Row House District, proposed construction of new one-story side addition, um, and I believe Emily Mar uh, Barton has a presentation. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, so the subject property here is a three-story end unit of the row of six attached units along the west edge of the district. The owner is proposing a small new side addition. The proposed one-story frame addition is located near the rear of the building, projecting approximately five foot five inches past the west elevation. The addition will be set back approximately 40 feet from the front facade and 51 feet from the front property line. It's proposed to be one story in height, um, a 20 foot long section of the west exterior wall and a 13 foot section of the south exterior wall will be demolished in order to connect the addition to the interior of the rest of the building. The side addition is rectangular in shape with a shallowly sloped copper standing seam roof. It features a brick clad foundation and lower level with wood framed first floor, largely composed of double hung aluminum clad wood windows proposed to complement the historic facade. 
Staff recommends that window details be provided with the permit application and that all material samples for the addition are submitted for review with the permit application. So the proposed um, side of the building is located, oh, the proposed side addition is located towards the rear of the home. And since the view from the street is partially obscured by the existing Western elevation, it'll be minimally visible. It does not overwhelm or impose on the building overall due to its small scale and limited projection beyond the existing full height west elevation. The applicant has provided these visibility studies from various locations along Fullerton, um, which show that the addition is clearly a secondary smaller massing separate from the main bank of row houses. Therefore, staff recommends that the massing and material palette of the proposed additions will not adversely affect the architectural character of the building or district. Additionally, staff shall review and approve any new masonry materials, dimensioned window and cladding details, and material samples with the permit application, as previously stated. Uh, the Seminary Townhouse Association issued a letter of support for this proposal, which was included in your packets, and Alderman Knudsen has no objection to the project. Um, I believe we have the architect here. Do you have any questions for him or for me? All right, thank you, Emily. Um, any questions for Emily before we hear from the architect? Um, seeing none, let's hear from the project architect. Um, is it uh, Bernie Bartelli? Yeah, hi. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Bernie Bartelli with Michael Abraham Architecture, and uh, thank you, Emily, for that presentation. She uh, basically went through everything on my list here. So I just wanted to reiterate that we work closely with the Seminary Townhouse Association, the neighbors, um, to try to keep our proposed addition in keeping uh, with their strict guidelines, the character of the surrounding row houses and other additions that were similar in this nature and to enhance the existing house. Um, and like Emily said, we received approval from the Seminary Township Townhouse Association. And um, that's really all I have. Uh, now, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you very much. Um, commissioners, any questions uh, for the owner and their team? Um, oh, yes, Commissioner Fair. Not, not a question, just, um, you know, just kudos on some really thoughtful design. Um, you know, I think that the elevations that you all shared and just the detailing of the, um, you know, extension are just really well done. So, but really happy to see this come through in the state that it is. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Fair. Um, any other uh, questions, commissioners, or comments? Um, seeing none, um, I'd like to echo that. I think that you, this is really, really well done. Very nice drawings, and we appreciate it. Um, and with that, I'd like to request a motion if there's no further discussion. Uh, motion to adopt the staff recommendation. Do we have a motion? So moved, Commissioner Ponce. Um, Commissioner ha uh, Ponce has made a motion. Do we have a second? Second, it, I'll Commissioner. Second. Go for it. <laughs> second, second it, Commissioner Fair. <laughs> second by Commissioner Fair. And um, we'll do the roll call. Um, Commissioner Rubin? Yes. All right. Uh, Commissioner Hughes? Yes. All right. And um, motion, uh, and I'm a yes as well. And the motion carries unanimously. Um, congratulations. Great work. Moving on. Um, item number two, uh, 4753 North Broadway, the 46th Board, Alderman Kappelman, former Sheridan Bank and Trust, uh, proposed reface mm -hmm. of an existing externally illuminated seven foot 10 by um, 23 foot three tall exterior wall sign located on the east elevation, approximately 40 feet above grade. Um, and I believe uh, Tyler uh, Taylor has a presentation on this one. Yes, good afternoon. Can everyone see and hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, this proposal is for a change of face to a sign on the Sheridan Bank and Trust Building, which is an individually designated Chicago landmark and, loca and located within the Uptown Square District. The building occupies the lot bounded by North Broadway to the south and west, West Lawrence to the north and North Clifton to the east. The eight-story building was designed by architects Marshall and Fox and Husak and Hill and is clad in white terracotta. 
Since its construction in 1925, the building has been occupied by a series of banks, continuing to this day with Old National Bank. A permit application has been received to reface the existing large wall sign on the east elevation that faces North Clifton and the elevated CTA red purple line. The sign was initially permitted in 2003 under permit number 181212 before the building was designated a landmark in 2008. Due to its size and height, refacing this sign requires both a city council order and approval by the permit review committee. The city council order has already been issued. The applicant proposes to replace the face of the sign for the former bank tenant with one for the new tenant, Old National Bank. The sign seen here at right is a temporary vinyl banner installed at the location of the sign that is proposed to be permanently refaced and serves as a mock-up of the proposed sign. The existing sign face is a graphic printed on 14 separate panels that are mounted to a backing structure and tiled to create a larger graphic. The new sign face for Old National Bank consists of a graphic applied as a vinyl face to, to new aluminum panels. The existing panels will remain in place and the new panels will be mounted over them. No other changes will be made to the supporting structure, lighting, electrical components, or attachments to the building. As an existing condition that was permitted and in place prior to the landmark designation, changing the face of the sign only without removing and replacing any other part of the structure will not expand any adverse in fact, impact on the building, provided that the new signage does not significantly change the visual impact of the sign overall. The proposed sign for the new tenant is blue and yellow, matching the new bank's corporate colors. The signs for the previous bank tenants were more neutral and thus did not stand out against the light color of the building. To reduce the visual impact of the proposed sign, staff recommend that consideration be given reducing and the area taken up by the yellow and blue portion of the sign. Staff recommends approval of the proposal with these conditions. First, as proposed, only the face of the sign, consisting of the aluminum panels with vinyl applied graphics, will be replaced. All other components of the sign structure will remain in place. Second, to reduce the visual impact of the proposed sign, consideration should be given to reducing the area of the yellow and blue surface of the sign. And three, no other signage is included with this approval. Alderman Kappelman's office and Uptown United have both reviewed the proposal and neither has objections. The sign contractor is here and able to answer your questions. Excellent, um, thank you, Tyler. Um, commissioners, any questions for Tyler? Um, Let's hear from the uh, sign contractor. Um, we'll please hear from Frank Lambert. Hello. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm Frank Lambert. I'm the uh, Southwater Science contractor and the licensed pro expander on this project. Um, Tyler hit every point, everything that I want to talk about. Um, one thing I like to add is I mean, the, you got the purple red line there, but I feel like the sign is scaled to large. It's small relative to the large wall that it's on on the elevation. So really not until you get to the red line or uh, Winthrop Avenue, you're not gonna really see the sign. So it's not like you're gonna be able to see it really really well on Clifton Avenue, it's in 20 feet up. And um, that's all I have, uh, that's all I have, any questions? Thank you, um, Commissioner. Oh, also, also, we did we did receive zoning approval uh, two months ago on this as well, even though I've had the error there. Okay, thank you, um, Commissioners. Any questions? I see uh, Commissioner Fair's hand up. Yes, thank you. I just had uh, maybe a first question, and uh, Tyler, you may be able to answer Frank as well. Just. Uh, about the actual extent of the sign, um, the existing or the, um, I'll, I'll say the first Midwest Bank sign looks like uh, at the bottom portion of it, it's it's a little bit shorter than what the canvas stretch that's the mock-up. It looks like that stretch is a little bit further than the, um, you know, base, if you will, of what that sign mm -hmm. is. So I just wanted to confirm that the new sign is going to be 
you know, essentially the same extent that the, you know, original sign is and not, not what the mock-up currently is stretched to be. Yeah, they were. It, yeah, it will be uh, as the FFB one. Uh, most likely there was some bleed or anything of that yellow and it wasn't cut, so it just dropped out of the, uh, that uh, description down there. Okay. That'll be light for light as as. Thank you. I, I've got a follow-up question, but I'll, I'll let Commissioner Ponce um, ask her question first. Hey, Commissioner Ponce. Well, thank you. I was just curious if the consideration is to reduce the yellow, what is what is that? Um, what are you considering? Um, we can't, you know, it's, it's uh, on, on one hand, we can't design you know, or like have a say in the design of branding, but um, if uh, so, we want to leave that uh, option open. But if the just any any design that reduces the overall area taken up by the the bright blue and yellow. So if that's a smaller colorful logo, or if that's just reducing it so there's more of a white border around the sign, um, just uh, um, it, anything to to reduce. Uh, to explore a way to reduce the yellow and blue area. Okay, just you're just saying reduce the yellow area, not the blue, also. Um, both. Oh, both. Okay. So perhaps the white, adding the white border, is that is it up for? Um, you're going to see what the options are yeah so the the blue and yellow bands is the uh the logo is the the bank's logo mm -hmm. um so it doesn't in our view it doesn't necessarily have to take up the entire sign because their their logo could be the same blue and yellow band but smaller on a on a white background or on a neutral color background okay and so uh, we're looking for options then. Are our new options being submitted? I guess would be my follow up question. <laughs> to review. Yeah, that the, so that's the recommendation that the, okay. um, that the uh, for the permanent version of this sign that uh, the area of, of blue and yellow is made smaller. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Ponce. Um, Commissioner Fair. Yeah, thank you. And um, yeah, just building upon Commissioner Ponce's line of questions. And um, this is just one of those situations where kind of graphic design meets architecture and signage is always um, sometimes minutia, but it's, it's really sometimes a fine art. I know I deal with this <laughs> quite a bit. Um, and I'm curious if we could expand um, you know, the, the recommendation for old national bank to consider some of their secondary logos and other lockups. Um, I know just with a quick Google search, they have some that, um, the blue and yellow striping is kind of a separate point. It's a bit more minimalized. And that, I think there's some good context for it. I mean, there's, um, there's just the significance of the building itself, uh, that's there. And I think, uh, there's there's this fine line of uh, you know where you you want to get your name out in a marketing opportunity, but you also don't want to flirt with you know uh, what may come across as a little um, you know kind of haphazardous or unintentional in terms of how you've applied your signage to this bank building, which is supposed to be this kind of you know formal uh, you know kind of entity there. So I, I think there's some strong logic there. I mean, you look at uh, First Midwest Bank, who was there before, um, you know, for those of you all that are familiar with the bank, I mean, they're purple, slap that everywhere. Um, and I think there's strong precedence there already that, you know, a more kind of subdued approach was appropriate. Uh, and I think that'll be something that's understood by their, uh, you know, customer base as well, without sacrificing necessarily the visibility and the size of the signage. So, you know, if we could get a little bit more specific and ask that they consider, um, you know, their secondary logo lockups for this, I think that'll go go a long way. 
And I think that's a, I think that's a, a great point um, where maybe it's just a, the, the letters by themselves and the, the yellow, the blue, yellow, uh, yellow, blue, yellow is kind of smaller. Agreed. So is that a, is that a, 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 a motion sort of to modify the staff recommendation sort of uh, to include um, sort of an alternate approach rather than just reducing the yellow or it's still a version of reducing the yellow, but exploring an alternate um, logo approach for that sign? You said it way better. Yes, I, I, I would make <laughs> that motion, um, you know, which is really expanding upon, I think, um, you know, point two um, from the staff's recommendation, which is to ask, you know, old national bank, you know, or whomever is responsible for producing and finalizing the graphic to consider some of their, um, you know, other logo, um, you know, alternative logos and markups that are, you know, more subtle with the blue and yellow striping. And, and I did, you know, just acknowledge I saw Frank with, uh, South Waters hand was up and, and as well as Commissioner Hughes. Um, Frank, were you trying to re respond on that? Yeah, um, I've, I've thought about a hundred of these things. To my knowledge, we have a, a linear option and uh, that option as well. So I think that the best thing we do is we just take that exact option that we just reduce it with a white border. That's all right. Um, instead of having all that white space and having a logo slash letters at the center of it, it'll be tiny compared to this. I'm sorry, it's really hard to hear him. Oh. Frank, do you, can you re repeat yourself and just kind of speak uh, closer to the phone? Um, yes, you hear me? It's still, it's still hard to hear you, but um, I heard you. You heard me? Okay. Um, Much better. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, there was, uh, I've done about 100 of these banks. I believe we have two logo options, linear, which is a logo box and letters, and then the version you see um, that we proposed. I think the best option might be just keeping what we did, but putting like a white border around it versus just having something in the middle of the sign show the logo and letters, which will make it very small uh, in comparison to the panel sizes. And I can show a mock up of that um, as soon as possible. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Fair, does that answer your question? It's a different approach entirely. I, I, I hear you, Frank, on you know um, the verticality of this and and you know I I don't, I, my recommendation was not to say that the alternate logo that the bank has is the right solution, but I think mm -hmm. it's it's a step in that direction. Um, so, you know, I understand that the bank wants to keep its brand integrity, you know, in, in check. Um, so, I, you know, I think at the crux of it, you know, what, what we're looking at and most concerned about is, you know, you've got these, the yellow and the blue kind of striping that is uh really at odds with with the building itself and just the, the the nature of it um so i think you know just kind of increasing the white perimeter of it is not going to necessarily take it where we're hoping it could go um commissioner hughes really go ahead yeah i was just you know, chiming in on this point. I don't know if we're going to get to a solution today. I think um, incorporating Commissioner Fair's comments um, into the staff recommendations as a motion and then, oh, yay, Deanna, and then potentially having uh, one of us commissioners kind of review a, a display sample from the client as they are further developing this so that they don't have to come, you know, in a month to a whole nother meeting and go through the entire process again, I think would be, uh, Deanna, please. <laughs> um, thank you, Commissioner, exactly what I was going to say. So appreciate that. Um, and it sounds like 
Commissioner Fair or Commissioner Hughes, uh, who would be our main contact? I'm, I'm happy to be the contact. Thank you. And yes, it, it is in, you know, it is a permit application. We would we would work as quickly as possible and review it with you to conclude, um, you know, the approval. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much, um, Deanna. Thank you so much, commissioners. Um, I think we have uh, a, mo uh, a motion um, on the table, revised motion. And with that, I second. All right, Commissioner Hughes seconded. So the motions by affairs, Commissioner Fair, and um, seconded by Commissioner Hughes. Let's take a roll call for the um, uh, adopted uh, staff recommendation. Uh, Commissioner Ponce. Yes. Commissioner Ponce is a yes. Um, Commissioner Rubin. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Rubin is a yes. Um, and I'm a yes as well. And um, the motion carries uh, unanimously. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on to item number three. It's the last item on the agenda, uh, 10324 South Longwood in the 19th Ward, um, Longwood Drive District. Um, the proposed, oh, it was a violation, the proposed rehabilitation construction of a rear, a new rear addition to an existing frame uh, single family residence. And Emily uh, Barton has a presentation for this. Thanks. Thank you, Chairman. So this subject property is located mid-block along Longwood Drive in the Beverly community area. This project has been in discussion since 2020 and sometime last year, the contractor began work constructing a new visible addition to the rear and side of the historic home without approved permit drawings from the city. The Alderman's office reached out to staff in November of last year and staff filed 311 reports. After being instructed by an inspector to stop work until the appropriate permits had been approved, the project architect reached out to staff to determine next steps and to redesign the proposed addition to meet commission standards and guidelines. Um, so as I mentioned, sometime last year, construction was undertaken at the house. Um, staff visited the site and took photographs of the new work. As built, the rear addition protrudes significantly from the north elevation of the original house um, and distracts from the original elaborate roof line. The large addition dwarfs the original home and is a substantial change to its um, historic massing. This design is quite visible from the wide side yards of the property and does not meet the commission's guidelines and standards. So the current proposal before you is to remove the unpermitted work and to construct a new rear addition that better fits the scale and character of the house and neighborhood located entirely behind the existing building. Okay, so uh, the existing frame home features a quite substantial front yard with a setback of approximately 130 feet from the front property line. The project includes full interior rehab to the historic house and new construction of this addition. Work to the historic house will include select window replacement, removal of non-historic siding, and other miscellaneous repairs. So the additional space is proposed to house a new attached three-car garage, an extension of the existing kitchen, a home gym, and additional bedrooms and bathrooms on the second floor. The addition has been designed to complement the original house and will feature a new stone foundation and smooth fiber cement siding in a blue color to match existing. The new addition is proposed to be approximately 100 feet long east to west and approximately 30 feet wide south to north. Um, you can see that the addition is two stories in height and approximately 30 feet tall at the peak of the new roof. This is shorter than the existing height of the historic roof, which is closer to 36 feet tall at its highest point. Um, so while visible from the street due to the large northern side yard, the rear addition will not extend north further than the existing historic north elevation or south further than the historic south elevation and will largely just be extending the existing footprint of the home, which is shown in yellow. Um, the commission has historically approved rear additions at the staff level, so long as they're no taller or wider than the existing building. 
Because of the large size lots and substantial setbacks in Longwood Drive, the new construction will be at least 145 feet from the front lot line. Because of the significant distance from the public rights of way and that the new construction does not project into the side yard past the north elevation of the historic house where it's most visible, um, staff recommends that the committee find the redesigned addition to be minimally visible and not an adverse effect to the building. Um, so as I had mentioned, there's some other work proposed Sometime in the past, the original wood siding on the home was either replaced or concealed um, with aluminum or vinyl siding. The applicant's proposing to remove the non-historic siding and replace it with new wood siding. Staff recommends that upon removal of the non-historic siding, uh, we be notified and make a site visit to verify if any historic wood siding remains to review its condition and determine if anything can be retained or repaired. If any historic details are uncovered during this time, they should be documented and used to further inform the design in the permit drawings. If the historic wood siding can be repaired, select areas of deterioration are to be replaced in kind with wood. Um, if the siding cannot be repaired, new wood clabbered siding shall be installed on the front and side elevations of the original building. Per the commission's wood siding repair and replacement policy, Smooth face fiber cement siding may be installed on the new addition portion of the building. Many of the original windows in the, to the home are still in place and will be retained. Some windows are non-historic vinyl replacements and where proposed, these will be removed and replaced with new aluminum clad wood windows. Um, Alderman O'Shea's office has no objection to the redesigned proposal. And um, just this morning, the Beverly Area Planning Association issued a letter of support with the conditions listed here. Um, so I'm here if you have any questions. I believe we also have um, the project architect and potentially owner and contractor, but I see the architect for sure. Excellent, thank you so much, Emily. Um, any questions for Emily um, before we hear from the architect, project architect or ownership team? Um, seeing none, I'd uh, like to hear from the project architect, and um, I believe it's uh, Jenna Di Maria. Yes, Gina Di Maria. Yes, it's I'm the principal of my firm. Um, so we have um, gone through. Uh, we started this permit application uh, back in 2020, I believe, um, and it. You know, we've. I originally consulted with um, Lauren Schur about the the idea of the original project was. An attached garage, really, and no um, addition um, other than the garage. And so the project had started. You know, I've been trying to play catch up with the clients as far as um, they just have new ideas all the time. So it was really trying to keep up with their um, their ideas. This project grew, 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 and um, so unbeknownst to me, um, they. We, we secured a demo permit for the interior. Um, they did that through a, an EPP. Um, I was aware of that, but obviously I didn't need to be involved in that because there weren't drawings involved. And we were still trying to figure out what we wanted to do with the design. Um, and in that, in that time, the contractor started building and um, here we are. So I have been trying to help the clients understand that we need to bring this back, go back to the original um, you know, come up with a design that complements the original design of the house and um, massing and all that. Um, and the the wife, or the, um, Mrs. Elaine, had you know fallen in love with the house and wanted to keep it you know very small and um, historic in nature. And you know, um, like most clients, the um, uh, Mr. Elaine had different ideas. So. Uh, we are finally all on the same page and going to, um, you know, per the the, the redesigned drawings, um, build this, rebuild this in a way that um, satisfies um, their needs, but still satisfies um, everybody else that's involved. Okay. <clears throat> thank you. Um, thank you for that background. Um, commissioners, any questions um, for the architect? Um, seeing none, um, any points of discussion? I, I, sorry. 
Yes. I do have a question. Sorry about that. Um, I, I, uh, it was there, was the, was the, were the people involved in this process just not aware that this was a historic property? They, like, I'm trying to understand why we got to this point. They, they were aware that it's a historic property, but um, they understood that it, it the overall had to, that as long as, yes, they, they were aware. They were aware. I don't think they understood that they could just kind of design without, or start building without um, the permit approval, you know, knowing that this was a process. But to that extent, I think, I don't think they knew exactly um, what they were getting into. Okay. And um, the, the kind of highlights that were outlined by the staff are crystal clear now and everyone understands that there is a process in place for um, the construction moving forward, right? Not you, I'm talking about the builders and all the other folks. Sure. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I can, I, yes, absolutely. I mean, I, okay. yes. Okay. And I'm only saying that because I, you know, this, this is like a monstrosity of uh, a project. I mean, it seems like there's the whole shell is in place now and has to be rectified and redone. Right. So it's, you know, a lot of efforts and, you know, redoing of work that could be avoided in the future. So hopefully, right. hopefully everything's clear now for everyone. Yeah. Oh, this is the first time that I've, um, in addition or a building attached to a building has been, been um, built without a, without a permit essentially. So, yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Hughes. Commissioner Bonset. Yeah, just to follow up on Commissioner uh, Hughes, I had the same um, uh, astonishment, I guess, if you will. And these things catch us by surprise, right? When you're trying to do the right thing. And and it's very surprising that the contractor also took it upon themselves to just um, put the siding on. Um, and I'm just curious, as, as it's getting removed, um, you know, we might not have the answer, but well, how will it be removed in order to retain what was there? To what care will it be removed? And obviously staff will go and take a look and review it. What is that process like now? Well, because it, it is a monstrosity as Commissioner Hughes says, it's, it's a big project. Um, there isn't, all the existing siding is still there. The only stuff that was removed was, to, was the back portion of it to add the addition. So there, so everything you see that has the plywood sheathing on it, that's new. Um, so there wasn't any, all that blue siding is still there. Um, and it has not, it has not been removed. And the per, so, and, and all that, so the existing house is, that's, that is a combination of aluminum and vinyl siding. Um, even the, all the posts, everything around that porch is, it, it's all clad in um, vinyl just super unusual. Um, but so, yeah, so all of that, you know, they are, are planning on removing all of this. This has some, um, I don't know if you can, there's some, that the circular um, turreted bay has a, uh, has some original wood on it. Um, but we have to look at, kind of investigate that a little farther, but their, but their objective is to, to go back to the original. If it's not underneath that, um, cladding that was put on there like 40 years ago um, or do it new to match, you know, per the guidelines of, of the commission. Thank you. Commissioner, does that answer your question? Yes. Um, other commissioners, any, any questions or um, for the architect? Um, seen, uh, seen none, any, any final points of, uh, discussion? And, um, with, with that, um, like to request a motion to adopt the staff recommendations. Do we have a motion? I, 
actually have a question. I apologize. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was trying to get back to the staff recommendation page, and maybe my question is expounding a little bit on Commissioner Ponce's um, question. And uh, I don't know if Emily may be uh, better able to answer the question, but specifically for you know recommendation three about the non-historic siting, um, I understood Commissioner Ponce's question to be about the removal of that non-historic siding and the fact that the original building siding is still underneath that um, and you know being concerned about what that process looked like of removing because you could very much destroy whatever integrity it might have had if you know there's no specific care given to that and I, I think I was just a little confused at the end of I think that question of original siding was actually underneath there or if it's not there and it's you know uh, uh, complete replacement yeah so what happens a lot of times is um when wood siding which you know was traditionally always used um when it deteriorated when it needed to be repainted when it needed to be replaced when the owner didn't want to deal with it anymore a lot of times instead of fully removing the wood siding they would just put up vinyl or aluminum um, directly against it um, so this is something that we see uh, fairly commonly in the city, actually. Um, so we don't know what's under there at this point. That's kind of what um, the the investigative removal needs to be. Um, you know, we can we can well we certainly typically we make it so that there's like you know a couple of two by two foot squares to just kind of see what's underneath to get a good idea of uh, on the different facades what the conditions are. Um, you know, if, if that happens and wood siding is found underneath, um, you know, we would, we would need to evaluate that condition and, and make sure that the um, remainder of the non-historic siding is, is carefully removed. Thank you. Thank you for that, Emily. So I, I understand now this, you know, uh, non-historic siding was placed on here years ago. This was not a part of this, you know, yes. expansion project. Oh, yeah, yeah. Crystal clear, Decades crystal ago. clear. Okay. Yeah. Uh, apparently the owners before this, I think it went into a trust at some point, but the uh, the last owners who, who they actually put on, there's quite a few little um, additions on this um, when my clients bought it. And this other person we were told was a, a siding, um, they owned a siding company, which is why all of the columns and I mean, like literally everything on that front facade is, is clad in a vinyl. Some of it has a um, like a, a metal siding too, which is a bit of a mess. Yep. No, that that makes a, a ton of sense. And um, yeah, that um, who knows what's actually underneath there and the condition right. of it. So, okay. Yeah, I'd be happy to, you know, um, move to support uh, the staff recommendations. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Fair has, has made a motion. Um, we have a second. Second. Second by Commissioner Hughes. And we'll do the roll call. Um, Commissioner Ponce. Yes. Commissioner Ponce says yes. Um, Commissioner Rubin. Sorry, yes. Okay. All right, thank you, Commissioner Rubin. Um, and I'm a yes as well. Um, motion carries unanimously. Um, you know, good luck, we'll be, we'll be watching. Thanks. And I'm happy at least that it's getting you know, rectified. Sure, yes. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> this brings us to the end of our meeting. There being no further business, I'd like to re request a motion to adjourn. Um, so moved. Thank you, Commissioner Hughes. Um, do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Ponce. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.